Hey, it's Joseph here. I have two graphics card or actually just boxes of graphics card here and I wanted to just kind of discuss the point of what sort of graphics card do you need as an architect or architectural designer? If you're a student who's studying in architecture, what sort of graphics card should you need? And that is a completely valid question. It can be answered in different ways and I hope to just shed some light for people who's wondering that based on my experience experience and what I have found in the industry. And whilst all I state here in early 2020 may be true, it may completely change within this year or in the very near future. So uh, just take what I say here as sort of a grain of salt. And obviously you should do your own due diligence as well when deciding to purchase certain things. But hopefully if you are wondering a few things, I can kind of answer through this video. So it is more of a talking head style video I'm gonna go for. First of all, if you have a laptop, then you're pretty much fixed at that point. You can't really swap out graphics card. But if you have a desktop, there's a good chance you might be able to swap out your graphics card. It's quite a standalone and you can even fit a very new graphics card in the older system and expect it to work. Given that you have enough room inside of the case and the connection and power support Apply, all of that but most case scenarios you can actually utilize new cards on your old hardware as well so it becomes very valid point where what sort of graphics card should you have for your own workflow and is it going to be suitable so what is graphics card well graphics card is basically a small computer inside of your computer that is dedicated for calculating graphics and it is able to calculate light and form of geometry and then show you a visual signal which is the pixels that you see on the screen and making sure that it is supposed to be this color for this pixel and for 4k screen how many millions of pixels is gonna be calculated about 60 times a second for these graphics card to think about so when those pixels become more and more difficult to calculate because you got complex lighting and complex type of effects that is going on inside of your computer it's gonna have harder time computing that data therefore you need beefier graphics card I think the essential question is do you really need graphics card for your own test well it all depends on what sort of software that you use and how complex your projects are if you're dealing with very complex models and very complex projects then you're gonna need more beefier graphics card to handle but if you're tasks are not really demanding then you can get away with what's called integrated graphics that is basically supported by CPU so CPU is able to put out a lot of calculation as well so it can handle good amount of graphics and often the small form factor laptops doesn't even have a dedicated graphics card it just depends on the CPU alone and gets the job done if you don't regularly have graphically demanding tasks then you can can just get away with having integrated graphics and frankly integrated graphics have come a long way on AMD there is APU and in Intel side there is going to be Intel HD graphics or Iris plus graphics that kind of handles graphics quite well and you may be okay however if you do really complex photo editing in Photoshop or do content creation on Premiere Pro or for architects and designers and engineers engineers if you do a lot of real-time renderings and complex 3d modeling where it has a lot of edges and faces and polygons and vertex then it may depend on graphics card heavily and whilst a lot of rendering has been dependent on CPU in I would say about five years ago now a lot of renderings are based on real-time rendering which depends on graphics card rather which kind of uses like the gaming engine unreal engine Unity and when you do VR it's heavily depend on graphics card so at that point you really need graphics card and frankly the naming scheme of a graphics card is not easy and it's hard to compare what is better versus what is worse so it took me a while to really understand that so hopefully I can kind of explain in a way it makes sense to get a bit of reference I use this website called videocardbenchmark.net I am not affiliated by any means but but I just go to their high-end video card chart 
So here, everything is compared as a single score. Obviously, it is not broken down to really detail value and the specs of each card, but it makes it really easy to kind of compare how the cards stack up to each other. So you can just search your own card. So I can do GTX 1080. And then it's immediately apparent GeForce GTX 1080 Ti is better than GTX 1080. And then if you go down further, GTX 1080 with max Q is going to be lesser. So you can just kind of keep an eye on the number or the graph and you can just kind of see how they compare to each other. So for example, GeForce GTX 1080 is going to be 12,000 range. And then if you go all the way down to much older card, let's say GTX 680, then it's going to be much lesser of a score. Therefore, you can kind of guess, okay, it is going to be lesser performance than, than GTX 1080 designs that you can find. When it comes to graphics card, there is currently about just two different company only. There's one called AMD and the other one is NVIDIA. And NVIDIA goes with the green color and you can see the green of these boxes and AMD is usually red. Now, now the red color company, I don't have a sample here because I don't typically use it. At least in my humble opinion, AMD historically have not been like the main guy and the CUDA cores that NVIDIA supports is quite essential for my daily workflow, especially for architecture and graphic design. So I have been looking at NVIDIA mainly. If you're diehard AMD fans and Vega fans out there, then I'm sorry, but I'm gonna just mainly discuss about NVIDIA. NVIDIA logo is right here and they basically design and develop different type of graphics card with better technology every year and so on. When they develop these new set of architecture, they actually issue those design and development to different hardware vendors who does their own set of industrial design over it, make it more efficient or more powerful or do different branding, make it cooler, put some colorful lights on it and satisfy gamers out there. So basically MSI here is a hardware company who have received those design from NVIDIA, the reference design from NVIDIA, and then they did their own set of design on top of it. Here is actually a reference card from NVIDIA or Founders Edition. Whenever you hear Founders Edition, it means NVIDIA have designed it, but they also have manufactured. And typically the cards that you find is the one that is going to be manufactured by different hardware vendor MSI Asus Evga and then Gigabyte there are many different companies out there who's gonna do their own set of industrial design on top of the reference that they put out so then I guess the question would be which card is actually better for customers like ourselves these type of cards the ones that are made by other companies are pretty much where it has been improved upon and made more efficient and actually they are able to put out very competitive pricing as well so it often comes out much cheaper than sort of the founder edition or the reference design that Nvidia themselves manufactured. Having said that that actually wasn't true for maybe mid 2018 and end of 2018 where a lot of Bitcoin and mining was going on and there was a serious shortage of graphics card out there because everyone was buying graphics card. So at that time, all the pricing on these cards skyrocketed, whereas the ones that are manufactured by Nvidia, they were able to just keep the pricing as they have recommended and every now and then they'll put some stock on so that the sale goes on. When I was looking for my own card at the time, any graphics card that are manufactured by MSI, Asus, Evka, those companies were very, very expensive and really, really hard to get my hands on. Whereas I was able to get for a much cheaper price at the time, at least to get my hands on the Founders Edition, the reference design of Nvidia. And that's why I have this card here. So at that time I have paid about 550, I believe for GTX 1080 and it's 
certainly is a lot cheaper nowadays, but that's what I have been sitting on for past two years. And after two years, I thought it would be right time to move on to better graphics card. Therefore, I have here is GeForce RTX 2080 Super. So let me just back up a little bit and explain about different naming schemes of NVIDIA graphics card. So when it comes to NVIDIA graphics card, there's actually about two different families. One line is called GeForce and the other one is called Quadros. And the GeForce cards are basically what NVIDIA makes and give the reference design to different vendors to make their industrial design on top. Whereas Quadro cards are all manufactured by NVIDIA themselves. And Quadro cards it's more geared towards the professionals and because Nvidia themselves make the quadro cards they vouch for its quality of parts and also the performance is actually much better it actually physically have better specs than regular GeForce cards however the quadro cards tend to be a lot more expensive because they have sort of a premium on top of the consumer cards of GeForce so I personally have been recommending GeForce cards over Quadro just because it is much cheaper and they come a very long way and if you pick the cards that are same price GeForce card is going to outperform Quadro cards. Quadro cards do have much larger VRAMs but that's about it and that is my personal opinion however if you feel like you need Quadro card for whatever reason you probably don't need to hear what I'm saying here so for people out there who doesn't really know the difference between GeForce and quadro cards just go for geforce you'll be saving a lot of dimes that way so ideally you're buying geforce cards now what sort of geforce card there is a lot of numbers out there here is at least 1080 and then there's 2080 there's a lot of numbers and there's pretty much a running joke out there where tech people don't really know how to count iPhone 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and then 10. And also Windows 7, 8, and they skipped 9 and then became 10. So they don't really know how to count. Well, same is for graphics card as well. So it was 700 series and then there was 900 series and there's 10 series and then it became 20 or actually there's one in between that is 16 or 1600s why i don't know they just confuse themselves and also the consumers but that's just how it is it typically has been i believe mx and then gt and then gtx in terms of tier count and whatever the number that has stayed sort of the generation of the card so it could be 7 or 9 or 10 or 20 and then in a the recent year when they introduced the 20 series they introduced rtx rtx became sort of the upper tier of of GTX so the RTX is sort of the top tier so it made everything more confusing but there is that so GTX 1080 used to be sort of the best tier out there out of GTX line it used to be GTX 1050 and then there's 1060 on top and then there's 1070 on top and then there's 1080 on top as a top tier when it comes to 20 series then you can just kind of expect 2050 which doesn't exist I believe it starts with 2060 so 2060 and then 2070 and then 2080 is a top tier anything below that is I, I believe 1660 and 1650 and that is considered GTX not RTX RTX stands for ray tracing and is sort of a new technology that allows you to calculate lights in much more realistic form and it is very very good so it is hugely beneficial for architectural world that's why I'm moving on from GTX to RTX to have much better performance in ray tracing and finally ray tracing is coming to architectural rendering which is gonna be fabulous so with the sum of numbering system out of the way there's actually suffix as well so there was names like GTX 750 Ti or GTX 1050 Ti what does Ti stands for 
titanium maybe but ti basically means it is better than normal number so gtx 1050 ti is better than gtx 1050 so technically there is gtx 1080 and also the better card is gtx 1080 ti so that is sort of in between of like a half step over the tiers gtx 1070 ti is a little bit less than gtx 1080 but like a full step below of GTX 1080 Ti. So hopefully that makes sense. And then just to add more complexity into the mix, they have something called Max-Q. Max-Q basically means sort of the dial down version for typically laptops so that it doesn't draw as much power or it doesn't create heat as much. Basically consider that as sort of the, so consider that as sort of half step down and GTX 1070, Max Q will be better than GTX 1060, whereas it is lesser than normal GTX 1070. And typically, the mobile graphics card that are inside of the laptops are lesser than full graphics card that are for desktops. Although it is not clearly stated there, that's what to keep in mind. Generally, laptop will perform much less than full desktop graphics card. Oh, and I actually forgot to mention there's Super on the name of this card. So so it is GeForce RTX 2080 Super. We'll just take that as like TI, half step better than the regular cards. Although there is actually 2080 TI as well. So a bit more confusing, but I think that is a good rule to follow. So when you jump generation, like how do they compare in terms of tier? We kind of get like the full tier versus half tier kind of thing. But then when it goes from 10 series to 20 series or 7 series to 9 series or 9 series to 10 series, like how do they compare to each other? I think the good rule of thumb is that every time the generation shifts, it is going to be one tier less that's going to be comparable to the previous generation and that is quite confusing so what i mean is the gtx 980 is going to be comparable with gtx 1070 i know some people might say differently but gtx 1080 is going to be comparable to rtx 2070 although 2070 actually performs much better than gtx 1080 but it is a safe sort of rule of thumb or assumption to follow all of these complex naming and numbering systems so hopefully what I just said kind of give you understanding of what are these names mean and what those numbers actually mean and how they compare to each other. And because I'm buying top tier cards, I'm not practicing it the best but it is probably not the best to buy top tier cards because there certainly is diminishing return when you're buying the best one of a kind so there's going to be happy middle that you can hit those are typically going to be 1060 or 1070 or 2060 and 2070 cards right now because 20 series is a current gen probably 2060 or 2070 is your best bet when it comes to bang for your buck so if you're watching this and you're some sort of architectural company director who's wondering whether your employees need graphics card well if they do a lot of renderings the chances are they're going to need graphics card and preferably a beefy one you don't want to skimp out because there's actually really nothing worse than spending a lot of time waiting and waiting and struggling and hitting an error and having your project closed because your graphics card is simply not enough to handle the workload that you decide to put for the sake of time efficiency and to save your employees frustration please get them good graphics card i've been there done that it wasn't pleasant so hopefully that was helpful for people out there wondering what sort of graphics card they should buy in this very confusing world of graphics card if you have found this video useful please like and subscribe to my channel for topics like this i'm gonna try and cover different topics like this next one i'm thinking is perhaps monitor buying guide for architects or engineer students and such i'll do that topic later on but for now it was graphics card thank you so much for watching as always i'll see you next time bye